Hi, Professor Rudio Moreno here, learning objective three notes from chapter six. Uh, applying for credit, everything starts with a credit application. Uh, those are very important because that is where that information is used and is collected by credit bureaus, believe it or not. Um, but whatever you put down on an application, you should be truthful in terms of, you know, your employment, your income, uh, other types of information that's provided uh, that they've asked you for, to provide should always be truthful. Okay. Uh, this information is used in what's called an investigation, which basically is sort of the, you know, sort of a, a background check of, you know, well, does this person have any past loans? Have they been paying it? Um, lots of in, lots of things that go into sort of researching it. Uh, a credit bureau is basically um, sort of the collection agency for all information that you filled out from all those credit applications you you filled. Um, any information about any credit lines that were granted to you that come from banks and other creditors and a payment history on those credit lines are also collected. So uh, a credit bureau really is like a huge filing cabinet of your, of your credit history. All the times you've applied, all the times you've gotten loans, your payment history, whether you've paid it off or not, whether you're late, blah, blah, blah. It's all collected by, by the credit bureaus. There are three credit bureaus um, that you'll read about. You'll also have access to uh, a copy of those credit reports free uh, through this site here, um, one from each. So you probably should do one every every four months. Um, and again, it's totally free. Um, a credit bureau report is an example in your book showing, you know, basically some personal data, your address history, some employment history. Um, now, public records are part of a credit bureau. So if you have any um, any history of bankruptcies or things along that line, uh, that's going to be on uh, public record. And that's going to be also collected in, in your file. Uh, if any company went uh, to try to collect from you and you failed to pay them, and so they sent it to a collection agency, that's going to be on your credit report as well. And then again, every single time you've had some type of an account opened and information about that account is going to be listed. Okay, and this is updated every single month. And the number of times you've actually applied for credit is also going to be listed on the credit report. So all that's very, very important. Now, um, companies like FICO, which is Fair Isaac Company, these are companies that created an algorithm that use all that information from this credit report and put it over a very large algorithm, mathematical and statistical calculation that they've, they've uh, invented to spit out something called this credit score. Uh, a FICO score is the most popular form of credit score, okay? And uh, basically, you're going to be reading a lot about uh, about that. Um, but that's uh, those are very important concepts to sort of understand. Um, your credit score is about that history and whether you are how risky you are to lend money. Yeah. Uh, if you have a very, very high credit score, then basically you're not very risky to lend money. Too, and so a lot of lenders would be happy to give you the loan. Uh, if your credit score starts going down, you become more risky. In other words, the reason it's going down is because you perhaps haven't been good with your credit, haven't been keeping up, maybe paying late, maybe not paying at all. Um, and so that history sort of builds up. And these credit scores are updated um, daily, really. I mean, it's an instantaneous update so, um, so all types of scores like, like the FICO score is basically calculation on the most up-to-date information in your credit report. Uh, why does that matter? Well, because, you know, I remember I told you anytime you get a loan, the price of the loan is the interest rate. 
So um, that interest rate is going to matter a lot because it's going to cost you that much more money to borrow, right? So if you borrow $1,000, but you owe interest, then that $1,000 is going to cost you more than $1,000 to borrow. Um, however, there are other types of charges that may apply. Uh, there may be an application fee. There might be um, other types of things that are used to uh, make the loan cost more. And so based on the law uh, represented by the Truth in Lending Act, the lender must disclose all costs of the loan and thus provide you with something called an APR, annual percentage rate, which reflects the true cost of how much interest and fees you're gonna be paying for the year, okay? So that's important to know. Um, and you're gonna be seeing that. The most common ways credit cards do this, by the way, is something called an average daily balance, which means that they literally look at your balance every day. Um, so here's an example in terms of average daily balances. So for, uh, for October, um, there were, you know, you had a certain amount of days where that was your balance. Um, there was a certain number of days, looks like seven, that that was your balance on your card, 15 days, which that was your balance on your card, and five days where this was your balance. So they basically create, they multiply these across, add them up, <clears throat> and then divide those by the number of days in the month and to calculate what they call an average daily balance. It's your average daily balance that the interest rates apply to, okay? And so getting those balances down as quickly as possible lowers your average daily balance and thus lowers the amount of interest you pay on something like a credit card. Uh, the interest rate is charged daily, it's charged daily. Uh, anytime you have a credit card or a line of credit, they are charging you interest every single day you have a loan, okay? So, um, so there's a way in which we calculate the daily rate multiplied by the average balance, and it calculates the number, the amount of interest that you owe. So just look at this one. This is over $36 in interest. And let's say the minimum payment on this card is 50 bucks. Okay, well, you pay 50 bucks. Look, the first 36 bucks they take as interest. It only leaves $14 left. That's what's going to lower your balance. That's why it takes forever to pay down credit cards if you're making minimum payments. Okay. Um, so that's an important thing to look at. When you do have a credit card, you're going to have to read your statement because there's some important information on your statement, uh, such as how they did calculate that average daily balance, what the interest rate is, and the interest charges that they've uh, calculated for you, okay? It also shows you, you know, everything that you use your credit card for. Every time you purchase something, that shows up as a charge. Anytime you sent them a payment, that lowers your balance. Um, and so they put all the payments down, and then they add all the charges. They add the finance charges, and if there's any other fees that they charge you, that'll be uh, charge to get your new balance. And um, these are just very, very important to sort of understand uh, how they calculate things so you know. Okay. So there's uh, minimum payments. We've talked a little bit about that. There's a good exhibit here showing how a minimum payment works, things that you're going to need to know uh, on this chapter. So, and there's good videos on it as well for you. Okay.